At first glance, it may seem that a witch is a witch, but the further you go into learning about the craft, the more you realise there are lots of different types of witches. And since Wicca is an ever-changing religion that adapts to the practitioner, it is ever-evolving to meld with the needs of its adherents. With so many possibilities, how do you know which type of practice is best for you? Even if you have already chosen your path, it's always a good idea to learn about other possibilities. And if you haven't chosen a type of practice, here is a great list of possibilities to begin thinking about which one is right for you. While it can seem overwhelming at first, sometimes it's a good idea to decide which ones do not fit, rather than trying to find which one does. This will help you narrow your search and over time you will find the right fit. Traditional Witch A traditional witch practices from a historical perspective in following the old craft that came before the modern adaptation of Wicca. Many traditional witches study their ancestry and the folklore attached to it. They want to honour the old ways of worshipping and most often choose a pantheon that aligns with their cultural background. Gardnerian Witch The father of Wicca, Gerald Gardner, developed this practice in Britain during the mid-20th century. From his original coven, Brickett's Wood, he passed on his interpretation of witchcraft. As an initiation tradition, only another Gardnerian coven can bring in a new practitioner. This is done in order to trace the lineage of practitioners back to the very first coven. In this practice, covens have 13 members and are led by a high priestess and priest. Gardnerians adhere to the story of the horned god dying and being reborn each year as the mother goddess remains eternally alive. Their rituals are highly elaborate, and many of the orthodox covens still practice ritual nudity. Gardnerian covens are quite secretive, so it can be a bit difficult to figure out as a new practitioner. Alexandrian Witch Alex and Maxine Sanders created the Alexandrian tradition as an offshoot of Gardner's practice. While the two practices are similar in many ways, they are very different paths. Alexandrian witches are initiated and organised around a high priestess. The Alexandrian tradition focuses on the ancient archetypes of the oak and holly kings, who battle and win, then battle and lose, to bring out the light and dark, warmth and cold. While not as secretive as their Gardnerian counterparts, Alexandrian witches still place emphasis on tradition and following protocol. Dianic Witch Dianic witches predominantly focus on feminism and the supremacy of the goddess. As it grew out of the women's movement in the United States, Dianic witches are attuned to the political and social oppression of women, as well as the injustices they suffer within their gender. The hierarchical structure is quite lax and fluid, while allowing for growth along one's own path. Originally created by Susanna Budapest in the 1970s, any coven derived from the original lineage remains female only. Budapest faced criticism for not allowing transgender women in her groups or even her online school, claiming that it is a woman-only space for females born female. However, more recent practitioners have created offshoots that do allow transgender and male practitioners into Dianic Wicca. Sax Wicca Witch Raymond Buckland moved to New York from Britain and brought with him a version of Gardnerian witchcraft. His practice adapts Gardnerian practice for an American culture. Within the practice of Sax Wicca, there is an emphasis on herbs and divination. This tradition does not include oaths of secrecy, rigid hierarchical structures or a book of shadows. There are no degrees, so a democratic approach to coven leadership is established. Self-dedication and open-mindedness abound within this practice. Corellian Witch Founded in the late 20th century by Caroline High Corell, this practice initially focused on spiritual healing and herbalism, 
While seemingly more eclectic and universalist, this practice is quite widespread today. Norse Witch Norse witches honour the ancient practices of Scandinavia. While this is a new path within the Wiccan community, it is predominantly made up of practitioners who decide to work with this pantheon of deities. There is no hierarchical structure or initiation rites. It is simply an infusion of Nordic traditions within a Wiccan practice. Practitioners weave their own practice with that of ancient Norse traditions in sabbats and religious cosmology. Celtic and Druidic witches. While technically two very different traditions, current practitioners often blend both together. While next to nothing is really known about the Druids, within Celtic mythology there are many references to their practice. Practitioners often work with deities from Irish, Welsh, Gaulish or Cornish mythology and often have a more metaphysical and a shamanistic approach than traditional practitioners. While there may or may not be a hierarchical structure, practitioners focus on what information has been preserved throughout time within this culture. Solitary Witch Solitaries practice predominantly alone rather than with a coven. They learn about the craft through books and online research, where they develop their own style of craft. While they may participate in circles, they do not adhere to any structure, as many create their own set of practices drawn from a variety of sources. Remember, you don't have to pick just one type of practice. Blending and changing, adapting and searching is what Wicca is all about. For now, just know there are lots of possibilities when developing your tradition. You don't need to pick one and stay with it for life, just choose the one that feels right at this moment and keep an open mind that your own style and preferences will change and adapt over time. There's no shame in being a beginning and searching practitioner. Take as much knowledge as you can from others and develop the best path for you.